what are the keys to online success for law firms today? I think listening is the most important thing. So, I mean, oftentimes people think about, um, you know, it's about putting out content. Well, it's not. You know, it's not content. People don't care about content. They didn't come to a community to get content. They came onto a community to learn and to share. So to the extent that lawyers may come into these communities, whether it's blogging or whether it's LinkedIn or whether it's Twitter or whether it's Facebook or whatever, what have you, um, they didn't come here to have people push stuff at them. And so what firms need to understand is it's about engagement, it's about relationships. And uh, you know, to the extent that they have a firm brand, that corporate brand is being trusted less and less. It's not because corporations are being trusted less and less, it's just that people have alternative sources to build trust. So maybe <clears throat> maybe Steichman or Osler or Olave, I mean, great names in the law here in Toronto for, for corporations to think about using a firm you're with in personal injury matters, great names. Well, that's a great brand, but now those people have the ability to pick up information from friends mm -hmm. they meet online. Who are those friends? People that are sharing things on the internet. Well, if that's becoming really important, then you're going to have to uh, listen to what those people are, are thinking about, what are they talking about, what are their questions. Um, so I think the most important things are that listening is most important, having empathy is most important, talking in a conversational way is most important, not just producing content. One of the things that we talk about quite frequently among ourselves is the role of video. As social media right. expands and law firms begin to get involved in it. What are your thoughts about the, the, the place that video will have in the law firm website in the future? Yeah, and, you know, and I don't always look at it revolving around the websites. I mean, where would I rather have my video if I'm a you know, leading lawyer here in Toronto? Is it important for my, my, my video be on my website? I don't know. Or would I, or would I rather have a you know, a body of YouTube videos that's sitting at YouTube that people are passing around the internet? Probably so. Um, and uh, my, my video content being syndicated at different types of places is important. But I mean, video is obviously important. I mean, if I'm trying cases as a lawyer, um, it sounds strange, but I'm going to break up the trial by using video. I may have a, I may have a television on one side of the jury box, a television on the other side of the jury box. I'm not going to have people talking at the screen, like most lawyers do, I'm going to sit next to my witness, and maybe we're going to have two cameras, because that's entertaining, that's, that's Larry King. Um, Larry sitting there asking questions of people um, was very engaging to people in the United States, and, and I'm sure in Canada, you have, you have TV shows that emulate that every day, that style of engaging. Now, what did Larry also do? that he was very good at. He didn't know what questions he was going to ask until he asked the first question, because that forced him to listen. So I, I think video is going to be very powerful. Um, you know, I keep thinking even internally for LexBlog, if, if I was answering two or three questions a day, you know, and the body of content was up that would have, you know, 500 videos, would those videos be passed around the internet all day long in law firms and professional services? Probably so. Yeah. So it almost sounds as if even young lawyers who are starting out developing trial advocacy skills, uh, where they might be using video, could try experimenting with video in other ways, such as interviews like this, to brushing up on their technological skills, which we don't learn in the normal course of practice of the legal firm. Yeah, or just go out and cover things. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. If you're a young lawyer and you're doing criminal defense, you know, you're not busy all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe you go to the courthouse. Maybe you cover things. Maybe you do a criminal, criminal defense something. Can you imagine? Um, interviewing a leading criminal defense lawyer walking out of the courthouse hmm. um, saying, I'd like to cover this. And they would love that. They would yeah. love it. And, uh, you know, the in the States, you had the uh, the uh, kid that uh, blogged. The second court cases. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, he was called, what, it's called first in line or something like that. He was there first in the morning hmm. interviewing people about what their impressions were. He could be using video in addition to blogging. Um, you know, it's all, it's all good stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, so, yeah, I think it, will, it certainly will be big. Yeah. Kevin, you've uh, developed this really strong foundation of a network of blogs. What is the future for Lex Blog? You know, I think it'll grow. it'll continue to grow. I mean, it started as a as a way for lawyers to get known um, organically uh, on their own. Now it's become a, a network of you know, thirty five hundred lawyers, and mm -hmm. it continues to grow. <clears throat> you know, hundred to two hundred a month. Um, it's going to become a real powerful network. 
So I mean, I'm here in town speaking for international boutique firms. Um, why are they here? Well, because they network with each other. And what does that mean? Well, they get together in conferences. They share ideas. They get to meet each other's spouses. Um, they refer work to each other. They call upon each other when they have needs. Well, Lexbox is going to be a network of uh, lawyers that are achieving more. I mean, it's, it's lawyers that are trying to be in that top 5%, that top 10%, that can't afford to sit on the sidelines. Well, that's a pretty impressive group of people that you can learn from, not only as a lawyer to refer work back and forth, but about business development skills. So people can share ideas. I mean, uh, I've got Chris Drew, who was here tonight. I mean, wonderful ideas about what he did. You know, he's sitting there with a blog and he's generating 20 leads a month. 20 leads. But he had to fill you know, that down where he said, listen, I couldn't take more than 20, so I figured out a way that people would have to prepay by the hour of their consultation fee, so we would just take those 20. That's wonderful information. I mean, think about that information being shared by Chris with other lawyers on their network. So that network will become very powerful. And then there will be a network of learning and referring work back and forth, but it will also be a network of uh, showcasing good legal minds. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you, you can be out there and blog on your own, and you're creating your voice by engaging other people, but you know, who's going to curate your content over time? As more and more people realize the quality of blogs is so high, they want that blog content, absolutely. Gary's blogging on the subject here, you're blogging on the subject, you're blogging on the subject. It's all really good stuff. So I want that. It's better than I can get from the National Post or the Globe and the Mail because you guys are where the rubber meets the road. But the question is going to be, there's going to be so much good stuff over time. Can the average person figure out how to use a reader mm -hmm. figure out how to use Twitter and say, well, I figured it out, I get all the good stuff. The average person may not be able to figure that out. So what, then what has to happen? Somebody has to curate that. Somebody has to see the good stuff, identify the good stuff. Well, Lexbox is going to have all this good law content. We'll curate it. We'll edit it. I mean, not edit the content itself, but we'll edit the right stuff to get it up in front of people. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes valuable not only to the other lawyers on our network, it becomes valuable to reporters, you know, to the extent of whatever reporters will be five and ten years down the road, but to business people, to read it. It'll be cool. I mean, lawyers will come and say, I'd like to read what this thing is that Lexbox has. It's called Lex Monitor or something else. Well, what comes to mind is <coughs> hearing about the networking is, is do you see any role for Lexblog as a network to be involved in law reform or advocacy generally? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, if you did that, you'd almost need to have a op-ed piece or, you know, a, you know, UI as publisher then take positions on certain things, whether a reporter, whether the editor of the New York or the New York Times or the Washington Post takes a position on things. I, I don't know. I mean, we, we have great lawyers that, that advocate certain things that we've empowered and we've enabled by virtue of our network. And if I look at Bill Moore, Bill Marler at Marler Clark, he's the <clears throat> he's the United States most foremost lawyer on food outbreaks. Well, he's highly influential to the Senate in the United States. He's highly influential to the state houses by virtue of the voice that he has. Is it is it our responsibility in the to take that position? Probably not, because I don't know as much about food we're down the such bill. If somebody's going to take a position on a particular type of legal issue, am I credible to do that? Probably not. But are lawyers on our network credible? Yeah, they are. Now, giving a voice to those lawyers so that they become influential, well, that's that's neat. So we have lawyers like, whether it's Bill Marler, or, you know, whether it's other lawyers that are doing workers' comp in New York, they're influencing their state houses. That's all going on. That's not my job. That's that's their job. So, Kevin, is it too late for people to get involved? It sounds like you have this incredible network that's developing and no, I mean, these cross pollination. It's, it's, no, I mean it's it's, it's all relationship building and engaging people. I mean, mm -hmm. when, when would you say it's too late? I mean, you're sitting here practicing law in Toronto, and you say, well, oh "My God, it's too late. I think I'll stop engaging people or building relationships to build my career." <laughs> you wouldn't say it's too late to, to join the party. And what would be the first step to joining that party? If you had to give a view on today some some sort of indication how to start. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm always telling firms, I said, if I had to go down the list of the top four or five things that offer the higher star, why I want to be able to LinkedIn. in. So they, you know, you, you not only have a complete profile there, but you're going to network with people, you join groups and showcases that your network, you're learning, you figure out, you know, who are the people in particular type of positions in particular industries that are within 25 miles of my office. You put them into folders in LinkedIn, you begin to follow them, you connect with them. That's a layup. Um, mm -hmm. You answer questions in groups. That's a layup because people are doing searches in your your profiles come up at the top. Next thing I do is I gotta listen. And, you know, I can't go into a room and network with my 
clients, prospective clients, and influencers with hands over my ears. But if you're not using a reader to be able to monitor an A list, an A list of sources, an A list of subjects, that's top. So I'm using a reader. Then I'm in a blog. Now I've got to begin to express myself. I need to have that home base where I'm going to blog. Then I'm probably going to use Twitter. You know, Twitter is a tremendous influencer just by sharing information that you see, not your own stuff by other people's, because if you share other people's news, you're building social media equity. Build that social media equity, people trust you. You can imagine being trusted on estate planning here in Toronto. How far are you from being hired for estate planning? About that far. Um, and when you put your own information out on, on Twitter, everybody's looking at it. Um, and the last thing to look at is, is Facebook for that inner circle of people you get to know better. Okay? Those are the people I may want to know about what their family is doing and what they're doing personally. It's like, you know, if you have relationships with clients as a lawyer, they're probably going to become good friends over time. Your best clients, they're no doubt their best friends. So they're going to be in Facebook. You're going to have your, your people you went to law school with or your undergrad with. They're going to be in Facebook. Well, those are lifelong relationships, so why not use those too? So I look at that, you know, as kind of you know, LinkedIn, listening with RSS for your blogging, Twitter. That's how I would get started. Okay. Yeah, it sounds too good to be true. Why haven't lawyers started doing it? Is it cost? Is it time? Is it putting well, themselves out there? It's, it's, well, you know, think about it. You know, how many lawyers are rainmakers? Six or eight percent. Okay, well, six or eight percent. That's the number. So you need to take all the lawyers and slice off the eight percent. It's not going to come naturally to that. Of those that, that it may come naturally to, um, some of them are more senior, so they're looking at the relationships they already have, so they're not coming to the internet. But the fact is that it is becoming a big deal. You know, so if a lawyer wants to do equine law, she used to do securities law, but now she's speaking in front of the Kentucky Derby, the Breeders Association on the Friday before the race. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So they're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's those role models along the way, you know, that are that are that are going to show the way. One final question, thank you very much for your time. What do you see as the trend to watch for the future? I think the consumption of content in a non browser environment, you know, whether it's in mobile devices or, or in Applications. It's it's 45 million iPads are going to be sold next year. 45 million. So people are going to consume their information that way. So the ability for lawyers to express themselves with content um, and to have that content curated into their environments is going to be significant because we haven't seen the investment into those apps yet like we're going to see it both into you know a Mac environment and to, into a PC environment. So just like the iPads taken off. You're, you're going to see an Android equivalent to the iPhone. You're going to see mm -hmm. HP. You're going to see, you know, the, you know, the other computers. You know, have Microsoft systems on, on tablets, and we're going to consume our content that way. It's going to be so nice. Well, and it's going to be great content. Well, then lawyers have the ability to put that content in front of those people, and it isn't going to be in blogs by itself. It's going to be I publish this blog, but it's curated into networks and displayed in front of people so they can consume it as they're writing. Mm -hmm. You know, the tube as they're riding subways as they're, you know, you, you name it. That's, I, I think that's going to, my gut tells me that's going to be, it's going to happen. And we're going to look back and we're going to say, remember when we consume content on a computer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we should be looking for a Lex blog app pretty soon? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think those are the things we should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, you met with some great guys here today that are doing apps, doing mobile, all those type of things. There's a lot of us that, uh, you know, that are looking at those type of things. Um, you know, there's only so many things all of us can be good at. I got, I got my hands full of teaching, <laughs> teaching 3,500 employers how to blog well. Mm -hmm. so that's 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 a challenge in and of itself. But it, but I, if you, I think you ask me what do I think that you're at, I think it's, it's that type of thing. Great. I'd like to thank you very much thank for you. spending this time with us. We will take your advice and listen to what you have to say. We'll see Please you come back to Toronto again. Yes. Yes. I will. Always here. Thank you. Thanks, dear. Law Talk is a joint presentation of Wise Law Blog, Dynamic Lawyers, and OmarHaredi.com.